Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Sladney. I am co-founder and managing partner at Acre Capital. Uh, and uh, really interesting to hear the presentation about Blackbird. I think you'll hear some, some similar themes in the Acre presentation. So I am going to share my screen. So first off, I just want to clarify, we get a lot of, uh, lot of questions on our, on our name and um, it's, it's a crew with an emphasis on crew. Uh, our founders came together to, to found this firm a couple of years ago with a real emphasis on um, playing venture as a team sport. We believe that it's best practice as a team sport and we really wanted to highlight uh, our collaborative nature. Um, and so that's, that's really the emphasis. We like the, uh, uh, double entendres, as you'll as you'll see throughout the presentation, um, but but really uh, we have a strong emphasis on uh, our team and the teams that we serve. So when we started the firm two years ago, the five co-founders spent three days thinking through our philosophy before we even got into investing strategy. We spent time and we sort of took a play out of the play of the playbooks from a lot of our founders to establish values um, because we felt it was it was really important exercise uh, if we wanted to reinvent venture uh, and that's that's our aim. Um, so as you'll see uh, on the slide, uh, our, our values are the following. Um, as a team, we believe depth of thought and diversity of perspective uh, amount to greatness. Um, we seek to be your most trusted and authentic partner and we are committed to the ongoing development of ourselves and the teams that we serve. And this, this plays out in a number of meaningful ways in our strategy, as you'll see. Uh, this is a snapshot of our team. I, I stole a uh, play out of the entrepreneur playbook and created your sort of classic team slide with, with logos as a, as a way to kind of just showcase the, the breadth and depth of, of our team. A uh, couple things to, to point out. Uh, we come with a, a mix of deep experience and venture, uh, in operating and as entrepreneurs. Um, we've played meaningful roles in building the companies and organizations um, that you see listed on this slide. Um, you know, and these are all outside of our, of our track record as investors. Um, we have deep functional expertise on the team as you'll see listed here. Um, and uh, you know, as you heard, we, we really do believe that diversity of perspective drives the best decision-making. Um, when we founded, our co-founders were of three different generations. And uh, as we've brought more people onto the team, we've done so with an emphasis on making sure that we have diversity of backgrounds. Um, and we take advantage of that perspective by giving every person on the team an equal voice in investment decision-making, which we think is pretty unique and frankly drives the best outcomes. Um, so as you can see, we're 70% we're women and underrepresented minorities. And if you expand the definition to include people of color, that's 90% that's of the investing team. Um, and then uh, half of us are first or second generation immigrants. Um, and there are a lot of other lived experiences that we like to highlight uh, among, among the team that we're happy to talk through if we, if we have the uh, opportunity to chat with you live. Um, share a little bit more about myself. Uh, just so you know who, who this person is in front of you. Um, so I, I'm a, a mom of a one-year-old uh, daughter who was born during COVID. Um, so I've only experienced parenthood as uh, uh, during COVID. And so excited to, uh, excited to take her out into the world. Um, I'm a native San Diegan. Um, I've been fintech obsessed since 2009. I was living in India at the time, actually working for the Clinton Foundation, doing partnerships there and saw some of the really early activity around mobile money. And that got me really excited about the opportunity for fintech to drive financial inclusion. Um, and that's one of our largest categories at Acru and where I spend the bulk of my time. You can see a number of my investments listed here. Um, I was fortunate enough as one example to lead one of the Series A rounds in Chime and have been in various board roles there ever since. Um, I also have a, a marketing background at, at Google um, and you can see other, other components of my background listed there. Um, just to give you a, a sense for some of the wonderful teams that we've backed, um, this, is, this is one way of looking at a, a snapshot. I'm very pleased to say that um, our, our first fund together as a group is a top 5% um, venture fund. We're very proud of that um, for its vintage. And, uh, and this is, this is an assortment of some of the companies. Um, these are our thesis areas. As you heard up front, we're very thesis driven. 
Um, and so uh, these are the areas that we spend a lot of our time. Um, they, they are somewhat broad as you'll see, but at any given moment in time, we have a prepared mind and we've gone out and developed sub theses uh, driven by sort of market and technology and societal trends that we are, where we are proactively looking for companies in those spaces. Um, and most of our investments um, come out of that work. So the four categories are financial services rebuilt, which is fintech, but really it's with an eye towards the fact that we believe that, uh, that now in this particular moment in time, financial services is fundamentally being rebuilt from the ground up. Um, if you think about fintech over the last decade plus, uh, it's, it's our view that, um, that a lot of the companies that have come to the forefront have done so by taking existing financial products and putting you know, great faces on them, democratizing access, um, you know, making much better digital interfaces, but, uh, but, but that because of the lack of real financial infrastructure and software uh, that hadn't been updated since the 1970s, uh, it was difficult uh, to really fundamentally rebuild those underlying financial products. And now that's starting to change. Um, so that's kind of the orientation with which we look at that thesis. And you can see some of the companies listed there. Security and infrastructure modernized um, is really just, uh, you know, with an eye towards the fact that, that we believe these underlying systems are as, as, as infrastructure evolves and especially in light of COVID uh, and more hybrid environments, there are more surfaces for attack, um, more opportunities for hybrid development environments. And so these are the areas that, that my team, less so me, but some of my other team members who are deep experts in this area spend time. Work reimagined is really uh, you know, looking at the, the new workplace from many different vantage points. Lately, we've been thinking a lot about um, what is a hybrid work environment look like and how do you support that with technology? Um, and then lastly, community activated is asset light community driven consumer um, where networks and social dynamics really drive a lot of the, not just adoption, but real utility. And so, um, and so sometimes those are marketplace models as you'll see listed here, but, um, but they also, it also extends into tools for the, to the, for the creator economy, various communication and social apps, um, et cetera. So these are the areas where, where my team spends a lot of time and has quite a bit of depth. So why should you partner with us and when should you think about partnering with us? Um, we have an early stage fund. Um, we've, we've been investing together in the prior iteration, prior to ACRU, uh, for, uh, if, you, if you include that time period, we've been investing together as a team for seven years at the early stage. Um, typically that means Cedar Series A, as I'm sure has been discussed extensively in these presentations, a lot of that has become semantics at this point. Sometimes we invest Series B and sometimes we invest pre-seed, but, but really all early stage out of this fund. Um, we'll write checks of one uh, million at the low end, up to fifteen million dollars, uh, and in our core thesis areas, which we just discussed. So, if if those uh, criteria fit you, then um, then maybe you should talk to us. Um, what does a partnership with us look like? So, first of all, we're very flexible investors. Um, you know, we we lead most of the rounds that we do, and obviously, we like to have a meaningful stake in our companies because. Um, we intend to work very hard for them and, and be partners in the long term. At the same time, we believe that first and foremost, we should be in the best companies. And that means not focusing on ownership targets as much as finding the best partners. And if that means that an entrepreneur cares about having another group around the table that's going to add differentiated value, we're happy to flex down to create room for that, or we can flex up and take the whole, the whole of a round. And so that's that's very important to us. We really tailor the rounds to um, reflect the needs of, of, of founders. Um, we're deep in your domain. Um, you just heard about our thesis areas and obviously that assumes that you're in one of them, um, but we, uh, we are all very dedicated to the various thesis areas that we're uh, investing out of. We go deep and build strong relationships in those ecosystems with potential partners and talent and, um, and we bring that to the fore for our companies. And then finally, uh, we really care about the fact that we bring diverse perspectives and diverse talent to the table. So, you know, as you heard with the diversity of our team, um, you know, we look really different than most venture firms. And that's 
by design. And that also means that our networks look quite different, not just because of who we are, but also because we actually actively invest in creating these networks of extremely talented people that, that represent a, a number of elements of diversity. And I'm happy to, uh, I'll share more about that momentarily. Um, next, we uh, recently launched a growth initiative called the Diversify Capital Fund. Um, this is a, a vehicle to invest in market leading companies um, that you know, we believe are on a path to uh, going public, um, a lot of ways to do that now, but, but, but that we believe, uh, are on that path to be standalone public companies. Um, and, uh, and it's to invest in companies that are interested in adding meaningful diversity to their teams and cap tables. We invest participatory co-investor checks. So typically five to $15 million in these late stage growth rounds. Um, and I'll tell you a bit more in a second about what it means to be part of the DCF network uh, and portfolio. But first, again, just want to call out, yes, we, uh, we, we embrace these financial double entendres at ACRU, uh, and, uh, and that, but the important thing to take away from this is that while we call the fund DCF, um, the intention is really to augment the diversity around the table uh, of these late stage companies. Um, I think this stuff is pretty pretty obvious. I, I imagine most people in this group are familiar with, with a lot of these stats. Some of them are still shocking to me every time that I read them. But, um, but when you look at the boards and executive teams of the Fortune 500, as an example, um, people of color are sorely underrepresented still, um, and, uh, and so are women. Um, one of the numbers here, and I'll, you, you all can read it for yourself, but one of the numbers here that really surprised me is that still only 1.1% of all private funds are managed by women or people of color. And this is really important because it also speaks to um, the wealth creation that happens both for the uh, investors that are leading the funds, but, but also the people that they're drawing in as their limited partners. Um, I think we have a real wealth creation gap in Silicon Valley, and it's something that with the Diversified Capital Fund, we're looking to start to remedy. So the, the value proposition, if you are a late stage founder who fits into the categories that I described um, to you is twofold. One, um, you can add meaningful diversity to your cap tables or shareholder base with a single check. Um, the vast majority of our, of our capital in that fund comes from diverse investors. So those comprise um, DEI-led and aligned institutions, endowments, family offices, um, as well as some DEI-lined nonprofit organizations where we've actually donated our own GP capital uh, to give them a seat at the LP table as investors in our fund. So this is for uh, organizations that typically haven't had the capital or the scale of endowment to participate in venture. Um, we're, we're giving them the capital to sort of let them in and hopefully to create real value for them so that they can continue to invest in the asset class um, and, and create real wealth and therefore impact for their constituents. And then finally, um, we have a number of DEI or sorry, of diverse um, leaders in their fields who have participated in this new fund um, as individuals. And, um, and these people are all committed community members um, who bring their wealth of expertise to our companies. So um, uh, we'll talk about that in a second, but, but this is sort of how the vast majority of the capital in this fund will be comprised. And so we're very happy to give growth stage founders the ability to add that kind of diversity again with a single check. Um, the next piece uh, that we think is exciting is that um, we will leverage the community of people that I just talked about um, to identify highly vetted independent board uh, members and exec talent. Um, we know this is increasingly important as companies scale and they're thinking about going public and too often they do some self-reflection and realize that um, they need to do better on this dimension. Um, and so we're, we're using that community and their respective networks to identify talent that wouldn't otherwise necessarily be top of mind in the sort of 
you know, common 10 people that get resurfaced and resurfaced by executive search firms in the Valley. Um, and so that's, um, that's why to work with us if you're a growth stage founder. Um, and that is, uh, that's my presentation. I, uh, there's plenty of other things about a crew that if we had more time, I'd be happy to talk about, um, but I am uh, excited to answer your questions. Lauren, thank you so much for your fantastic presentation. Thanks for having me. It's fantastic stuff. Yeah, we do have some, some questions from the audience. Uh, lots of people have lots of questions. So we'll try to fire through some of these as, as quickly as we can. Uh, the first question is uh, from somebody in the Zoom chat. Um, do you have an age limit for founders you invest in? Uh, and, and maybe a kind of a weird question, but how, what's the youngest founder you've invested in? Do you have typically requirements for how old you want somebody to be? Or, or, or maybe that doesn't mean just age, but also in terms of experience. Like how frequently do you invest in first time founders? Um, we, we often invest in first time founders. Uh, we, and we, yeah, we, in, in a lot of our categories, we think first time founders bring freshness of perspective. Um, and so it, 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 it varies by, by thematic area, I would say, and by the other members of the team that are on the table, but we don't have any, you know, floors. Uh, we've never discussed a floor on age. And as, as I shared up front, you know, we, we really see, um, we, we, we see value in, in age diversity. I mean, we have three generations on our founding team and that's pretty unusual, I think, um, for a venture firm to, you know, to be started that way. And so I think we, we bring that um, perspective to, uh, to looking at teams as well. That's awesome. Uh, I was just in Miami this last week for the big crypto Bitcoin conference, you know, got to meet some of the people I've invested in, that sort of thing. Really, really cool to get to meet people after, you know, being, being sort of remote for a while as, as, as somebody that's in FinTech, where, where's a cruise position on or thesis on crypto blockchain? Do you invest in blockchain or crypto related projects? Where, where, where does that fall sort of in the, in the general theses? Yeah, um, we absolutely do. We've been investing uh, as a team since, you know, in our prior iteration as well in crypto and blockchain companies since I want to say probably 2016. Um, it was a it was a thematic area that came pretty naturally to us given you know our depth in fintech and in security and infrastructure. I think that the knowledge at the intersection of those of those three I think lent themselves pretty well to um, having early perspective there. So we we did it we invested in um, one of Coinbase's rounds. Um, we're in scale and affinity. Uh, and a number of others, and uh, a couple of my team members were represented at Bitcoin twenty twenty one, and um, oh, really? and we're yeah, and we're always we're we're looking for new projects. We 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 would like to invest early um, in in these projects when possible, but we can be flexible about how we come in. Do I mean do, are your are your blockchain crypto investments sort of all over the place, or do you tend to focus on like DeFi fintech type investments? Where's the sort of or or do you, or do you not really care? So it depends a lot on who, who from the, the firm you're talking to. To me, I tend to focus more on the uh, fintech uh, or, yeah, fintech related crypto investments so DeFi or um, sort of crypto enabled investing. Um, and I think that uh, some of my other teammates have spent more time at the infrastructure protocol layer. Um, my, my teammates that spend time on community activated or spending more time around NFTs. And, um, and so it, it just, it depends on, it depends on the individual that we look at, we look at it all. That's really cool. Last crypto question. Do you, do you do a mix of equity or tokens or, or do you tend to just focus or have a, have a desire for one of those things? We've, we've done both. Uh, typically we've invested prior to a live token, but we do hold tokens yeah, yeah. Um, as a result. So that's really, really cool. Um, that's, that's fantastic. There were a lot of people that had blockchain related questions. So there's sort of the, uh, the general sphere there. Some other questions for you. Does a crew invest in business to business fintech? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we've done commercial banking like Divi. We've done commercial insurance like Pi insurance. Um, we've done infrastructure layer a lot actually in financial infrastructure, like Phoenix and Aurum. Um, so a hundred percent, it's, it's a, a big part of our FinTech portfolio. 
Okay, cool. What's sort of your, I guess, sweet spot or ideal range in terms of valuation that you like to invest in, as well as round, you know, round timeline and check size? So at the early stage, um, you know, like I said, we, we typically come in seed to series A, sometimes a little bit later. Uh, we are typically writing checks of one at the low end up to 15 at the high end. Um, and so, and, and because we're flexible, sometimes the rounds are double whatever our check sizes are. So that kind of gives you a sense of the round sizes that we're, that we're yeah. looking at. Um, valuation, it's an ever-changing question as yeah. I'm sure you've heard a lot of, I mean, uh, it's important to us, um, that, you know, valuation is a, is a factor, especially in that it is important to set the companies up for success in their next round. And that, that really matters to us. Um, but you know, ultimately our number one priority is to back the best founders and teams. And so there's a real range at, at where we'll come in. That makes a lot of sense. And, and yeah, I mean, valuations obviously over the last year have been very, very different than what they were even just six, seven, eight months ago. And so it can be, it can be a challenge trying to stick to a particular we're going to, we're not going to do anything over X um, because you also want to be in, in, in some of the best deals and you want to invest in the best projects. And if the market is, is saturated that way, then that's sort of the, the game you have to play. Um, let's exactly. see here. We have some other, other questions for you. Uh, a focal area you mentioned, this is from a meet on zoom is work reimagined. Can you elaborate a little bit about what you mean about when you say work reimagined? Is that like, uh, you know, remote work? Is that inclusive work? What, what, what do you mean by work reimagined? It's pretty wide reaching. It sort of depends on the moment in time, what we're, what we're focused on, but it includes, uh, it includes productivity. Um, it, it often is on that side is related to, you know, uh, product led growth applications. Um, but it also includes new ways to, uh, build a business. So often called business in a box, that's an area that we've, we've spent a lot of time. Um, cause we really believe that the future of income, um, is, is changing and, um, that there are a lot of platforms that, that are enabling that. Um, and so that's, that's a, another big one for us. Um, you know, it includes, like I said, um, collaboration tools for, um, uh, for hybrid work environments, as I mentioned, that's, that's a big one that we've been thinking about lately. Um, uh, and so it's, it's pretty candidly, it's, it's pretty wide reaching, but that, that gives you a sense. That's cool. Do you, do you typically invest or, or maybe not typically, do you ever invest in projects that are pre-product market fit, pre pre-seed, or are you typically from, I guess you said seed to series A? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're early stage. Occasionally we'll do pre-seed. Occasionally we'll do series B. Um, to be honest, uh, it, it's increasingly the case that at the early stage, uh, just with the way the markets are going there, there's less product market fit, um, it, even at the series A, uh, but we're pretty comfortable with that as a very thesis oriented firm, because we come in, um, you know, with a lot of context in most cases and, and, and with a prepared mind. And I think that that makes it easier for us to invest with less data. Um, or if, if it's a bit later and we just happen to have missed it, um, we can also, we also have the conviction to know when it's, when, when we should step in, even if we didn't get there early enough. And so that's kind of when we'll go up to be. Um, at, and that's out of the early stage fund, obviously with the diversified capital fund, which is our growth stage uh, fun. That's, you know, companies that are a couple years away from IPO. And so that's a totally different, different stage. Uh, the two funds actually are sort of a barbell because there's kind of an in-between space where we're not doing our initial investing. If I had to, if I had to put you on the spot, what would you say is a t an area of investment that you would, that you want to see more of? Like what kinds of startups do you, do you want more deal flow with that you aren't seeing currently? So look, I'm going to, I'll, because I spend a lot of time in fintech, I'll kind of focus in there. And I will say that I think that in light of all of the financial infrastructure development that's happened, especially like over the last five years, there's a lot more flexibility around re-architecting underlying financial products, re, like in insurance, rethinking what an insurance policy looks like. 
um, in underwriting, rethinking the data that's used um, and the terms that are given and you know what what a loan might be tied to. Um, and I, I think that uh, there's there's a lot more opportunity than what I'm currently seeing to, to fundamentally reinvent financial products um, that serve a wider audience of people. And that's something that I'm that I'm looking for. That's really cool. Last question. And thank you so much for your time. Your presentation has been fantastic and the questions are great. It's, it's really cool getting to meet other firms that are investing in crypto. That's sort of where that's sort of where I spend most of my time. Um, the last question for you is if there's, if there's startups that are wanting to contact you or founders that are wanting to reach out, what's the best way for them to get in touch with, uh, with, with Lauren, what's the best way for them to get in touch with the crew? Um, yeah, they can go ahead and just send me an email. I'm Lauren at acrewcapital.com. It would be very helpful, uh, if you do send an email cold to include real information about your company, whether it's a deck or a meaningful overview that has information about the product and traction. Cause one of the things that happens when, you know, we're trying to filter through this is, um, is trying to better assess whether it's a thematic thesis fit and whether there's stage alignment and um, and and when I get inbounds that don't have that information, um, if I'm really overextended, which as a mom of a 12 month old I often am, um, those kind of fall fall uh, uh, to the background. So um, so the more context, the better, and I'll get back to you and um, look forward to seeing what what you're all doing. Lauren, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate uh, you being willing to present and share with all the people that are here. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your evening and or, or I, I, mean, I assume it's evening where you are, I guess. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. And, and you're lucky to have Lolita up next. Yes, very, very lucky. Thanks so much, Lauren. Thanks. If you want to support events like this and, and keep them going in the future, thanking the sponsors on Twitter, what an amazing thing to do. You can at Jason, me at Inside and thank our amazing partners who made this possible. Really want you to um, give some love and attention, maybe retweet or thank the sponsors. You paid zero dollars to come today. You know why? All this work and effort because of sponsors like Just Call, ClearCo, Electric, and Burn Rate. Really, really, really appreciate the sponsors who help me pay for my team to do all this work. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruma Bose. I'm the Chief Growth Officer at ClearCo, where a large part of my mandate is really to drive ClearCo's international expansion into new markets. I've spent the last three decades being a serial entrepreneur, running fast growing businesses and investing. I wrote a best selling book about how Mother Teresa was one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time. I co founded the Canadian Entrepreneurship Initiative. And most recently, I was president of Chobani Ventures and launched the Tent Alliance, where we looked at the role of business in the humanitarian sector. I was actually a seed investor and a longtime advisor to the amazing founders of ClearCo that was previously called ClearBank. And I was able to see it grow from startup to unicorn. What drew me to ClearCo was their deeply held belief that talent and ambition exist everywhere, but opportunity does not. We at ClearCo are deeply committed to changing that. In fact, over 50% of ClearCo employees have been founders themselves. So I believe that we are truly and fully by founders for founders. And our mission is to rapidly democratize access to capital. At ClearCo, we provide equity-free capital to e-commerce and SaaS businesses and we fund some of the world's fastest growing digital brands. We invest anywhere from 10,000 to 10 million in these companies and take zero equity, letting our founders keep 100% ownership of their business. So you might be wondering how our funding process works and it's actually quite simple. A founder connects ClearCo to the apps they use to run their business. Think Shopify, Stripe, and Facebook ads, for example. After connecting their accounts, our AI algorithm analyzes their business's performance 
and health, determining the appropriate amount of money to invest in order to help the company and founders scale their business. And unlike traditional funding models, this process takes only 48 hours. Because our investments are based 100% on company data and our algorithm, we've been able to create a form of funding that's more equitable, removing the biases found in traditional VC funding. This allowed us to invest in 8x more female founded companies than the average VC, something that we at ClearCo are extremely proud of. Our reach is wide and continues to grow. We funded companies in all 50 states in the US and across Canada, and our network of founders spans well beyond North America, in Australia, in the Netherlands, in the UK, where 70% of our founders typically exist outside of urban metropolitan areas like London, <clears throat> like Amsterdam. And we're not slowing down anytime soon. We're continuing to push and expand well beyond our borders and further into Europe and some key Asian markets by the end of the year. We offer a full suite of capital products, having launched three unique products for founders, Clear Angel, Clear Capital, and Clear Runway. Let's take a look at each of these. Starting with Clear Angel, Clear Angel is our angel investment product designed for e-commerce companies, B2B SaaS companies, and marketplaces that generates between 2,000 and 20,000 on a monthly basis. With Clear Angel, we typically invest 10,000 to 25,000 to start, following which we provide up to 125,000 in subsequent funding. These investments are repaid by a 2% revenue share over four years. But the real power of Clear Angel investments is really all the extras. Founders who take Clear Angel funding get one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, regular progress reports, personalized advice and recommendations to achieve revenue benchmarks, supply chain analyses and support, competitive analyses, and very importantly, introductions to clear co-partners and mentors. Next up is our flagship product, Clear Capital. Clear Capital is our founding product for e-commerce companies generating at least 10,000 in monthly revenue. With Clear Capital, our investments range from 10,000 to 10 million and are best suited for any repeatable parts of your business, like digital marketing and inventory management. Clear capital investments are repaid through a revenue share and a flat fee. The last of our three products is Clear Runway, our funding product for SaaS companies. It's a solution tailored to software companies with at least 50 customers making recurring payments. Clear Runway investments range from 10,000 to 10 million. And this money is often used to scale sales and development teams or launch in new markets. As with all of our products, Clear Runway is equity free and investments are repaid via revenue share and flat fee. Beyond access to capital, one of our biggest advantages is that all of our products come with access to tools and technology specifically tailored to founders. This includes our data-driven valuation and insights tool, which allows founders to track their company's performance and even benchmark their performance against similar companies in their same industry. Another key ClearCo advantage is that ClearCo funded companies have access to our expansive partnership network. What does that mean? Our partners range from marketing agencies and technology organizations who give ClearCo funded businesses 
preferred rates to VC partners and more. Working with ClearCo gives founders access to cash back on their Facebook ads and automated partner recommendations based on their specific company data. As we continue to push to expand in new markets, our network helps founders like you to grow with us, exploring new opportunities as we grow together. All of this only scratches the surface of what we have to offer here at ClearCo. We are by founders for founders. And if you only take one thing from this presentation, I hope that it's this. ClearCo is reimagining the way you build your business. We offer fair and fast equity free investments of up to 10 million, meaning you can grow your business today and keep 100% ownership. If you're curious to hear more about what we can offer here at ClearCo, head to clear.co forward slash meet our fund. Thanks so much for your time today. I hope you're leaving with a deeper understanding of what ClearCo has to offer, and we hope to partner with many of you in the future. Thank you so much.